Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Albans. My name is Peggy Lowe, and I'm the rector here. I'm so glad to see all of you here this morning, um, and particularly those of you who were also here yesterday. For coming. <laughs> I was joking with Carolyn this morning. It feels a little bit like Deja Vu. Um, so glad to see all of you. A couple of things I want to highlight in announcements. Um, there's Christian education in the Parish Life Center after the service. So kids have godly play, youth be in the youth room, and then the adults are going to be in the parlor and we're going to talk about the topic of Sabbath. And coming up uh, on September 11th, at 1 p.m., um, we're hosting an AED first aid workshop. Um, so please sign up for it online um, so that we can take good care of one another. And then on September 18th, uh, we're going to have a ministry fair during coffee hour. So all the ministries are going to have tables and let you all know what they, what they do. Um, and you can get to know them and see their uh, ministries you'd like to join. And just, I hope you take a, you know, during communion or take the, the little bit of news home just so you can see uh, what's coming up and see be a part of all the exciting things that are happening. So now let us say together the welcome blessing, which is now on your hospital. So let us pray together the hospitality blessings. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, with us, guide our hearts and minds, and as you will today, all of us will worship with us as animals. Give us discerning hearts.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where's the Lord who brought us up? out of the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in the land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things, but when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied and Baal and went after things that did not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. Are there no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of the living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm assigned for today is a portion of Psalm 81. We will pray this responsibly by whole verse. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God. 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts, to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, and though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor of all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke of the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is a fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to Luke. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. 
For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. to do good and to share what we have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Amen. Please be seated. Yesterday was a great day. Thank you to everyone who came and watched and prayed. I am grateful and honored you all have not only called me, but wanted to keep me here at St. Albans. I've said it and I'll keep saying it, I'm really excited to see how this next stage in the life of this parish will unfold. I can't wait to see what all of us will dream and do together as we figure out what it means to follow in the footsteps of Jesus here and now. Since I'm the seventh rector, I wonder if this makes me the Sabbath rector. And by that, I don't mean that I will be perpetually on vacation though maybe sometimes we all need a little reminder of what a healthy relationship with work and rest might look like. And that's my plug for adult education today and the next couple of weeks after the service. I was blessed that my friend and mentor, the Reverend Matt Hyde, agreed to preach yesterday. He is at the Church of Heavenly Rest in New York, and he was my first supervisor back when I was a seminarian. And in his time at Hemley Rest, he has focused on working with the parish to overhaul their buildings and their programs so that they are a seven days a week church. Similar to how the vestry here talks about our call to be 365 day Christians. Over the years, he and I have had many conversations about leadership and strategic planning and the hopes and challenges facing the Episcopal Church and its parishes. So I was curious which one he was going to pick. Instead, he asked a new question. He asked, what does the best of us look like? What does the best of us look like? It's tempting to look to another church or to another successful nonprofit, or perhaps to what St. Albans was like five or 10 years ago to say, that's what the best looks like. But we aren't that church or that nonprofit, and while we may see their best on Facebook 
and their shiny, glossy side on Instagram, every group has their own problems. As for St. Albans, we are different from what we were like five or ten years ago. There are new people, and the old, I mean long-time members, who are still here, are different too. In the face of all these possibilities, Matt said, the best of us looks like all of us. It looks like all of us bringing our gifts. Then he referenced the words of Bishop Vincentia Kagabe of South Africa. She had the hard task of preaching the opening sermon at the Lambeth Conference, a gathering of 650 bishops from all over the world. Not only were they coming from places of serious pain and strife, they themselves were so divided that some of them refused to receive communion alongside their fellow bishops. She reminded them that as a church that seeks first God's kingdom and righteousness, we can and we have it in us to heal and serve the world. So Matt concluded his sermon by proclaiming that our best looks like all of us bring our gifts to heal the world. It sounds like a pretty tall order, doesn't it? Fortunately, the readings for today give us some concrete examples of how we might do that. Drawing on Paul's letter to the Hebrews, healing the world looks like mutual love. Mutual love, as he writes, looks like showing hospitality to strangers, for we might be entertaining angels without knowing it. Mutual love looks like remembering those who are in prison and who are being tortured as though we ourselves were in prison and are being tortured alongside them. If Paul were writing today, he might write, Mutual love looks like remembering those in middle class and working class families who are repaying student loans, as though we ourselves were paying the principal and interest on those loans. Mutual love looks like remembering those whose reproductive rights are being taken away when they are at their most vulnerable, as though we ourselves are dealing with the physical and emotional fallout of having those kinds of decisions taking, taken away from us. Mutual love looks like remembering our teachers and librarians, as though we ourselves are underpaid and overworked and having our curriculum and our collection of books con constantly challenged. Healing the world looks like showing mutual love for these folks and others who might be on our hearts and minds. Mutual love starts with remembering, being aware, and then being in relationship. By walking alongside them and listening to them, we can avoid making assumptions about what they need or what they should do. Yes, we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, and it is important to love them as they would like to be loved. Oftentimes, I think about pastoral care as visiting and bringing communion. And sometimes it looks like picking up dry cleaning or giving someone a ride. If we are not self-aware, we might do good and share what we have in a way that they find burdensome instead of helpful and healing. The people we show mutual love to as a parish and the ways in which we have and the ways in which we show our love depends on the gifts all of us bring. Folks at St. Albans have had a passion for refugees, for early readers in elementary school, and for those who are caregivers of a loved one. Who else is on your heart and mind? Drawing on the gospel, healing the world looks like asking why we do what we do, and if necessary, making the proper adjustments. In the parable, Jesus comes across like Miss Manners. It's practical advice, similar to a teaching found in Proverbs 25. 
Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. Wait a second, is this why you all leave these front pews vacant? <laughs> I don't think that's what Jesus means by this parable. But back to the parable. Jesus puts what sounds like practical advice in a different light by extending the parable. He tells his host that he shouldn't invite his neighbors or brothers or relatives to dinner because they would invite him to dinner and he would be repaid. Instead, he should invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Because they cannot repay him in this life, he will be blessed because he will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And let's be very clear, Jesus is talking to people who have a habit of putting themselves forward, people who have a hard time being humble. For as God brings down the powerful from their thrones, God lifts up the lowly. So if you're already self-effacing, you might hear this as a call to step forward, to rather than to lean back even more, to share your opinions and your gifts. Jesus is also talking to people who have a habit of staying in their own circles, who think of mutual love as caring for people they already know and love. He is inviting us to think about why we share what we have with some, but not others. Is it because we're more comfortable with people we know, with people we can easily relate to? Is it because we're afraid that we'll be challenged and questioned if we listen instead of give direction. Jesus is also inviting us to look around and see who's missing from our pews, who is missing from God's table, since this is an earthly preview of the heavenly banquet. As we launch our stewardship campaign in the coming month, Jesus might also be reminding us to invite and share what we have with those who cannot make a pledge those who don't have the time or energy to volunteer for church ministries, those in whom the seed we plant may not take root and grow for many years to come. If he were telling this parable now, who else might he add to this list? When we all bring our gifts, we help each other ask and answer these questions. We encourage each other to see and build bridges across the distance and divisions we ourselves have a hard time seeing and healing. I wonder what spiritual gifts you will bring to our common life. I wonder what kind of mutual love we will practice and who we will invite to our table, to God's table. There is so much pain and trauma in the world around us, so much strife and division, so much need and opportunity for healing. What will the best of St. Albans look like? Let's find out. Amen. Now let us reaffirm our faith with the ancient words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give all of us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Standing or kneeling, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
please take a seat. So is there anybody celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, or would like a blessing for travels? Now let us uh, pray first on your pew card, the birthday blessing. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. And now let us pray together the traveling, the blessing for travelers. O God, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Traveling mercies. Um, so just a few uh, announcements for reminders for communion. Um, I'm still in the boot, so we're going to come up in the middle instead of going uh, kneeling at the altar rail. Um, if you're coming up for a wafer, hold your hand out like this. If you need something that's gluten-free, cover your hand like this, and I'll know to give you a gluten-free wafer. Um, and if you want to come up for a blessing, cross your arms and I will give you a blessing. And also we are still in, in ting ting, so please do not grab the chalice from the servers and try to drink from them. And now let us not neglect, ne ah, reset. And now let us not neglect to do good and share what we have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the spirit now bring before you these gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be the body and blood of jesus christ our lord on the night he was betrayed he took bread said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his come. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Hagar, Rachel, Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us, Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who loves us, who creates and recreates us, and who walks with us be with you now and always. Amen.